Hi, everyone, and welcome to JSA TV, where we're coming to you today live from the floor of Data Cloud Global Congress 2025 in beautiful Cannes, France. I'm Barb Mitchell, and I'm joined today by Robert Usher, who's the director of Hanley Automation. I think it might be nice to just introduce you or let you introduce yourself for a second. Tell us a little bit about Hanley Automation, if you well, don't mind. Well, let's start mind. with me and move on to Hanley Automation. Okay. Because really, you know, I'm the most important well, person. Uh, you are our guest. Absolutely. Yes, the star well, of the show. As I said to you, Barb, I have a face made for radio. <laughs> so when we actually start a, a conversation like this, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Hanley Automation, a little bit about me, and then we go back to Cannes because of what a beautiful venue. Yeah. It's absolutely stunning, isn't it? Stunning. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. And if anybody is thinking about taking a trip to Cannes, I can highly endorse it. It's a fabulous venue. Everything's within a very, very short space. Um, and people are just so friendly here, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I agree. I was just, I've been having that conversation over the last couple of days with folks. You know, the, this event has moved to this venue of just last year was the first year, second year here. And it seems like it's exploded since then. It was a great show before. It's even better now. There's so many opportunities for people to connect and network and so many great, um, you know, Absolutely companies right. Yeah. That I mean, here. Monte Carlo is, it sounds like a fantastic venue. You know, you have everything going on, you know, the, the, the Crown Prince of Monaco, all that yeah. kind of glamour, but it was actually such a difficult venue to access, whereas everything right. is here on the doorstep in Cannes. Yeah. You walk out the door, you've got beaches, boats, what's not to love. Yeah, it's and about fabulous. 100 restaurants that people can Absolutely. gather at to meet, <laughs> and yeah, lots of opportunities. Absolutely. And yeah. the sun is shining, and, and the water is glistening, and we're all here talking so, to one another. So, yes, absolutely. Yes. So I'll give you, the, I'll give you the, the, the 30 second intro, if you like. Hanley Automation is a um, distributor for automation products that's uh, based in Ireland, uh, both north and south. And we've been working with our um, partner Rockwell Automation for 30 years. Um, so we're a long time doing this, but we're the only distributor um, that act actively uh, works with everybody in the data center industry. And um, it's a little bit of a niche spot in many ways, although looking at the business and the amount of money that's been fueled into data centers, it's a global reach now. It's not just a local Irish kind of, how are you doing yourself kind of right, business right, that it once yeah. was. So that's what we do. And I know one of the areas that's obviously of interest to you is liquid cooling. I, it's, it's something that's on the rise given the the growth of the density of, of sure. compute these days. And so talk about how you're advising people to, to best use this. So we're a non-combatant in liquid cooling. We don't actually sell a liquid cooling product. But what we have, or what I particularly have, what we've done at Hanley Automation is we've spent a long time working with partners, OEMs, end users in the cooling area. It's all been air. And when liquid cooling was being presented to the data center industry, people got a bit nervous because they didn't understand what was actually required. There was a huge amount of effort to try and become more sustainable with air cooling. And when liquid cooling came, it presented people with a almost a bifurcation in decisions. You know, should we still go air cooling? Should we go liquid cooling? And really what it is, is the chip manufacturers are the ones who are dictating the pace and dictating the actual need uh, as they bring out more powerful chips, as they actually come to the market with a more and more powerful chip. It's they who will dictate whether or not you need to use liquid cooling. But the data center industry is in a, a very, very cautious, sensible industry in many ways. They say they're very happy to innovate as long as that innovation has been around for 20 years. You're right. and, and that's what's given them the bit of difficulty when it comes to liquid cooling. So I started a podcast on liquid cooling because I wanted to demystify a number of the conversations and help people to make decisions around liquid cooling. Because really when people make a design change or people want to implement liquid cooling, it's not for now, it's going to be for 10 years, you know, 15 right. years. And, and that's a very difficult time to be able to take out a crystal ball and say, have I got enough liquid Especially cooling? Especially things are changing so massively, quickly. Absolutely, yeah. massively. Yeah. So that's, that, that's why we actually get involved with liquid cooling. And that's what we try to do is we try to bring all of the partners together. We try to explain exactly what's required or at least give them some light as to how the industry might approach uh, the task of um, dismantling liquid cooling and bringing back the bare principles and you know it, it, it's very very simple in, in, in more ways than one but people have to make decisions and that's where the difficulty comes. Now you you have the opportunity to talk about this I think a fair bit right with your podcast cooling data center podcast is that right? That's absolutely so, so what, tell us a little bit give us some highlights of, of what highlights. is discussed wow, on wow. there. Well absolutely I, I got 
some I've had some wonder I've been very fortunate to have some wonderfully interesting people to talk to. These people are uh, people who've been in the industry for a long time, people who actually spend their every day, uh, all all of the hours of every day, trying to actually divine what's coming next. And and they're wonderfully interesting people. They're people just like you and I. They've got you know they're very they're very accessible, and that's one of the things I really love about them in this industry. They're extremely accessible. Yeah. They've been more than generous with their time, and they share their insights with people on the podcast. And really, that's the, every one of them brings something new to the table. Whether it's talking about the the, the chip designs, whether it's talking about the uh, direct chip liquid cooling, whether you're looking at immersion cooling, things like that. There's a huge number of people who have brought their expertise absolutely free gratis. There's no charge. And they're telling this to me in a conversation that's very, very accessible. Whether you're on the car on the way home or whether you're traveling on a plane, I believe I'm a, a perfect cure for insomnia. If you're not able to sleep, uh, I can recommend my podcast. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, we'll make sure everyone tunes into the Cooling Data Center podcast. My last question for you, and I think this is something that a lot of people are thinking about when things like AI, of course, everyone's talking about AI, but just the, the massive, we were talking just earlier about the, the growth of workloads and density of, of compute. How do you do this? How do you advise people to manage this while still thinking about things like sustainability and energy efficiency? So if you want to deploy liquid cooling in an existing data center, it's not going to be the most sustainable option. You're going to have much higher, we call them PUE figures, because you've got to deploy the same infrastructure hardware as you've got for air cooling. So it's going to be a very, very difficult thing to be able to deploy sustainably, shall we say, yeah. because you've got to provide air cooling and liquid cooling, which means your PUE can't be just driven down. Right. But one of the things that I would say to people is that don't listen to the hype. There's a lot of hype going on. A lot of people are having conversations about liquid cooling. I see it all of the time. I see it published all of the time. And the truth is actually stranger than fiction. I don't believe that people have found the magic cure for liquid cooling just yet. No matter what you want to believe, it's not a magic. It's not a one size cures all. Really what you've got to do is take a step back and try and understand what it is you're trying to provide the cooling for. Are you doing cloud computing? Are you doing high performance computing? Are you uh, looking at cryptocurrency, for example, crypto mining, or really are you looking for AI? And how much of your data center do you want to give over to AI? And I think that if we just start having conversations that are more tangible, a little bit more basic, I think we'll actually find that we can slow down to move faster. Hmm. It's a very, very interesting topic. Though. It is interesting and it's hard. And I know a lot of people are trying to tackle this. And Absolutely. We, you know, all the smartest minds in the world, I think, are, are working Including on you this. And I. Like you and I, <laughs> exactly. And what a great way to end this! Uh, you know, thank you so much for for taking the time to, to well, chat well, with us today. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yep. we really appreciate it. Much appreciated. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in to JSA TV. Stay tuned as we continue to come to you today live from the floor of Data Cloud Global Congress 2025.